It is an extremely rare side effect to COVID and it has doctors stumped patients developing massively enlarged tongues. What is going on here? Welcome, I'm Dr. Mike Hansen, and I'm gonna break down what's going on here. So in Texas, a lady by the name of Karen Washington, a preschool teacher, unfortunately has a stroke. The stroke was severe enough to cause her to be in a coma for two weeks. When people are comatose, they're unable to protect their airway meaning saliva can end up going down the wrong pipe, meaning going down into the lungs. And this is called aspiration. And aspiration can also occur when people vomit and they're not able to protect their airway and it goes down the wrong pipe. So to preemptively protect against this, we put a breathing tube down. So she was on a ventilator, she had that breathing tube, and the good news is that she woke up from her coma. The bad news is that she woke up to having a huge tongue, and this is known as macroglossia. When she woke up, her tongue was incredibly swollen. I couldn't eat, I couldn't talk, I couldn't do nothing. It was just hanging all the way down to my chin. Macroglossia is relatively rare, but it's not unheard of. There are certain chronic conditions that can cause it, like amyloidosis. But it can also be caused by different types of angioedema. Angioedema is an area of swelling, meaning edema, of the lower layer of skin and tissue just under that skin or in the mucous membranes. So there's something called hereditary angioedema that occurs at a younger age, and then there's something called acquired C1 inhibitor deficiency, and that usually occurs at an older age. And then there's also the well-known ACE inhibitor-induced angioedema. So ACE inhibitors are most commonly given for patients with high blood pressure. Now, over the last year or so, there have been a cluster of these macroglossia cases in Texas. Dr. James Melville has seen nine of these cases in that time frame because he gets these patients referred to him so he can surgically reduce the size of their tongue. I think I know all the cases in the United States currently because they have reached out to me. I don't know all the details in these cases, but based on the media report, this is what we know. So in all nine cases, they were intubated, meaning they're on a ventilator, in two of the cases, they suffered from strokes. And in the other seven, they were hospitalized with COVID. It has to do a lot with just kind of where the virus is kind of attaching itself and the body's just kind of immune response to it. There are several explanations as to what is going on here, and it could be a combination of these. And if you like these types of videos, don't forget to click on that subscribe button and the bell notification, because that way you won't miss out when my next one comes out and you can help my channel grow. Now, in order to understand what's going on here, it helps to better understand a known medical condition called ACE inhibitor-induced angioedema. So angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors are the leading cause of drug-induced angioedema in the United States because they're so widely prescribed. Examples of these medications include lisinopril, captopril, ramipril, enalapril, and the like. Basically, anything that ends in pril is an ACE inhibitor. When angioedema occurs as a result of these medications, it most commonly causes swelling of the lips, tongue, or face. Hives, meaning urticaria, is notably absent. ACE inhibitor-induced angioedema occurs in 0.1 to 0.7% of those who receive these medications and is five times more likely to occur in those of African descent. Swelling usually develops over minutes to hours and then peaks and then resolves around 24 to 72 hours although complete resolution may take days in some cases. Swelling occurs as a result of elevated levels of bradykinin, a substance called desarginine pk and a substance called substance P. These substances cause the blood vessels to dilate, which leads to swelling. When the body doesn't break down these substances quick enough, that's where you get that swelling. So when someone is taking an ACE inhibitor, the risk of this happening is slightly higher. Is it possible that these patients were given an ACE inhibitor? Yes, it's possible, especially the ones who had strokes because usually stroke patients have elevated blood pressures. But it's also possible that this was COVID related. For the two people who were not COVID cases, maybe they had COVID and they didn't know it. Maybe they had a false negative test because they were tested outside the window for the PCR test. We just don't know. But we know that seven out of the nine cases, they did have COVID. That's why they were hospitalized. And COVID binds to ACE2 receptors. And the tongue is lined with ACE2 receptors. And when the virus binds to that receptor, we know that it alters this pathway, which affects bradykinin levels. This is something I talked a lot about in my previous video. These two molecules, by way of the ACE2 enzyme, are converted to 
angiotensin 1-9, and angiotensin 1-7. This is very important because this pathway here is gonna to lead to vasodilation, meaning the blood vessels, the pulmonary arteries get dilated. Why are some people more prone to this? It comes down to genetics. There are various genetic polymorphisms in certain enzymes called aminopeptidase P and neutral endopeptidase, which occur at a greater rate in African Americans. These polymorphisms lead to lower circulating levels of these enzymes, which are responsible for degrading bradykinin and its active metabolite, which is desarginine BK. And it makes sense that the SARS-CoV-2 virus triggers this same mechanism. So COVID tongue looks like one more thing to add to the list of strange things that comes with this disease and one more reason to get the vaccine. So that's all for this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.